Beth, thank you so much for joining us here at Fun Forum International. You gave some fascinating insights of your time spent in the Antarctic. What do you think you can share with the delegates here and what insights can you offer that are relevant to everybody? Yeah, so um, when I was invited to speak at the Fun Forum, I, initially I wasn't sure what sort of relevance um, my experience has to a conference like this, but as I thought more about it, um, I suddenly realised that actually a lot of it is really relevant, um, especially because the space that is here especially um, is becoming a lot of commercialisation in that area, um, and a lot of the research that we're doing is quite sort of cutting edge with um, research and development technology, which um, is something that people are investing in. So it suddenly um, became really apparent as to how it, how it is both relevant and hopefully interesting um, to the people here. Very interesting. Your, your time in Concordia indeed was spent doing quite a lot of research and development as you described it. Tell me a bit about that and what insights you hope to glean. Yeah, so we're really looking at sort of the human factor side of things, the human psychology, physiology of living and working in really extreme and remote environments, um, which has lots of overlaps to um, both corporate settings um, and just team environments anywhere really. Um, and I think um, in an environment like that, um, it really just brings out the sort of um, some of the harder elements of, of team performance, but um, it's something that's transferable a lot uh, across a lot of different domains. And it's interesting that Concordia replicates it, the environment perhaps that we're going to try and inhabit on Mars. So tell me about that and why that's relevant. Yeah, so I mean, Concordia is a really special, um, what we call spaceflight analog. So it's an environment um, which is terrestrial analog, which in some um, way replicate space. So the thing which is relevant about Concordia is the fact that the crew are completely isolated there um, and that's because of the low temperatures and because we have the long polar night where we don't have any sunlight which means that the, um, the crew are completely isolated even in case of emergency which is really interesting in developing sort of medical models that we'll need on future long duration missions and that's really where it fits into the sort of analogue program. You touched on the commercialisation of space as you described it. You mm -hmm. did talk about these ice boxes that are being used on the space station. Tell mm. me about that and actually how these sort of parts of, of the, the space industry, if you like, can start to become you know, something that we can relate to in a very practical way on Earth. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really interesting um, and really interesting time and exciting time to be involved in the space industry because it's becoming a lot more accessible for everyone, um, including commercialisation. So low Earth orbit now, which includes International Space Station, um, is now becoming an area with a lot of commercialisation. We've got development of, of course, like Elon Musk um, now being able to um, in the future going to be taking astronauts up to the International Space Station, as well as having um, the research platform available for commercial enterprise as well. So, for example, with the Ice Cubes project, um, where you can rent um, space in space um, to um, develop your own projects. And, and although that was um, previously possible in, in some ways, um, a lot of the barriers have been taken away, which means that um, it can be done on a much more um, accessible Scale. So if, say, a pharmaceutical company who wanted to carry out an experiment can actually sort of rent a space yeah, in, the, in the space uh, centre now. Absolutely, and this is a really new thing. You know, it's just over the last couple of months that this really has been a possibility. So it's really exciting to see that change um, in focus and really sort of governmental organisations really um, focusing on going a little bit further away, which means that all of, yeah, low Earth orbit is becoming, becoming commercialised um, in order to let that happen. Now, this industry um, is currently talking about a lot of change and disruption in their industry, mm. so the introduction of tech, particularly yeah. artificial intelligence, machine learning. You're somebody who's literally taken yourself out of your comfort zone. <laughs> so what would you say to people in this industry about embracing that and having, if you like, a growth mindset about what you can do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's all about sort of thinking outside the box um, in, in every different um, aspect. I mean, I, I guess I went into the, the space industry I sort of fell into it and I realised how applicable all the stuff that um, the space industries are doing are for life back on Earth as well. And I, I guess space has always been that sort of inaccessible thing which you don't really think about in our day-to-day -day lives, but actually has so much relevance um, to everything that we're doing and, and all the technology and things that we're developing as well. We're thinking a lot more about how that can impact our lives today um, rather than just how it can be used on future missions as well. And that's not just in sort of developed countries, but also in developing healthcare systems especially um, throughout the world. So what's next for you? You've been to the Antarctic. Are you going to space there? Oh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we'll see, we'll see. Will you come back and talk to us if you do? <laughs> I'd love to, yeah. Thanks so much for your insights. Thank it's you been so great much. To talk to you. Yeah, Thank it's you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.